Hello, so today I want to talk about backpopulating flows and how it works, what it is, and why we usually want to do it. How flows usually work in Clavio is when you set up a flow, only when you set it up to manual or, or live, it will start sending emails. In manual, you will need to send the emails manually, but until the flow is in draft, nothing is happening. So let's say you start a welcome flow. The flow will only be start the only we will only start sending emails when you put the flow in live mode if the flow is in draft what happens with the people who are in draft but they didn't receive any emails so let's say we want to do this let's say we want to create a win back flow for people who bought and who didn't bought in the last 60 days so we want to start sending them emails but if we set the flow live now it will only work after 60 days, so people who buy today will start receiving the emails in 60 days. But what about the people who bought yesterday, about the people who bought two days ago? So sometimes you want to go back and backpopulate those people and to add them into flows. I will try to explain how all of this works, how it's done, and what happens when you click different types of options. We have three different options for two different types of flows. And let's start with the definition, which is Backpopulating a flow is actually retroactively adding people to the flow, uh, depending on what we choose as option in Clavio. This only works for manual and live flows, so please remember if you want to backpopulate a flow, you need to make sure that the flow is live or at least in manual mode, because if it is in draft, this won't work and nothing will happen to the flow. Also, this uh, it's important to know that uh, backpopulating is not available for date property triggered flows and for price drop flows. This is still not available at this moment. Maybe it will change in the future, but it's not available now. And that leads it to being only available for metric trigger flows, segment and list trigger flows. But it's also important to mention that metric trigger flows are backpopulating options are different from what we have as uh, for the list and uh, segment trigger flows. So let's start with metric trigger flows. I will create a random flow just so I can explain how it usually works and what we count metric flow. Someone may not understand the term. So let's say this would be test and we will trigger this flow by a metric. Let's choose any metric, in this case place order. And we set it up. Sorry. And now we add few emails, we add time delays, whatever. The other important thing to know about the metric trigger flows is that it won't work if you don't have a time delay. So if, if you just set it up like this and we backpopulate the flow and let's say this email is live, no one would receive anything because this works retroactively and it needs to have a time period to activate what retroactive period we are talking about. So let's say we add here one hour what this will do is if you backpopulate the flow like this it will only include people who bought in the last hour so those that bought 59 minutes ago will wait one minute and then receive the email those that bought one minute ago will wait 59 minutes and then get into the flow so basically they are added in the path of the flow exactly where they would have been if they triggered the flow when they did activate the trigger this is for metric trigger flows the other thing for metric trigger flows that is important to mention is how we usually set this live and how we trigger this so again remember this need to be set to live mode this is a test account so we don't have an option to set it to live because our metric is not actually active this is just for video purposes so the important thing is make sure that the email is either live or manual. Just remember, if it is manual, you will have to manually go and send the email to those people later. So the option is here in manage flows, backpopulate flow recipient. And then all you need to do is just click backpopulate. If the flow is live and you click backpopulate, the trigger will be activated. People will be retroactively added to the flow. So in this case, everyone who bought in the last hour would be added to the flow. Let's say we have another email and another time delay and this is let's say two days so this way if we have it this way and we back populate then some people will go and wait for this email those people that bought 
let's say three hours ago, they wouldn't be receiving this email because retroactively they will be placed here. They, they already skipped this email because this was supposed to be sent during first hour. So they would be skipping that email and would be waiting here, would be placed at this part here. So you need to understand that, that the people are not added directly at the beginning of the flow when you click back populate, but they are added on the moment depending on when they triggered the flow in the past. So people who bought one day ago will be waiting another day before receiving the second email, but they wouldn't be receiving the first email. This is why it's important to understand how the flows work because sometimes there would be discount emails and it would be weird people just receiving the reminder email. So this is a little bit shaky, but at the end, it's your decision to make and it's better people to receive some emails than none. And that is all that we are having here to mention specifically about metric trigger flow. Uh, there is some general things that we will mention later, but let's first go to the list trigger flows and see how those are working. Again, we will create a new flow. This time we will trigger it either by segment or a list. The difference is insignificant. Both of them have the same options when it comes to back populating, so we'll just use any list. And we will do the same thing here. We'll add, let's say, two emails, and then we'll add two time delays. One would be, let's say, two hours, and then the second one would be two days. What is different now about backpopulating a list or a segment trigger flow? They have two options for backpopulating. And if you go here and click backpopulate, the same way when we find the backpopulate button for the metric trigger flow, we will see that we have two options here. What are these two options? The first option is backpopulating retroactively, similarly like the metric back population work. So this will check when people were added to the list and will only send to those people that were added in the last three days or how long the flow is. In this case, it's two days and two hours uh, for our flow, but it will only send to those people. People who subscribe before that won't be added. The second option is what we usually do for back populating. And this is option for everyone in the list, it will start the flow immediately when you click this button. So it wouldn't start it retroactively when they enter the list or segment. It will start them immediately, starting from the first email. So if you click the second button, people will start here, they will wait two hours and receive the second email, then they will wait two days and then they will receive the second email. If we click the first option, it would be same as for metric trigger flows. If people joined one hour ago, they will wait another hour and receive this email. If people uh, were joined one day ago, they will skip the first email, they will wait one day and then join the second email and so on and so on. So basically the first option in list and segment trigger back populating flows is the same as metric and we don't usually recommend it. It's always best to use the second option and trigger it from the beginning for everyone. Another thing is that People who were already, let's say you trigger this flow and you set it live. Again, remember, it's same thing as for the metric flows. For the back populating to work, the flows need to be set, the email need to be set either live or in manual mode. Uh, live emails will be sent automatically. Manual mode, would, you would need to go back and send those emails. The important thing here is that, let's say you trigger this flow, you set it live, and some people start receiving the emails and you go back to this flow several days later. Let's say this was 10 days. And after five days, you go back to the flow, but there are already people who are receiving the first email, who received the first email, who received this email, people who are already in the list. So what will happen if on live flow, for who is live for several days, or flow who was live previously, even more time, and he wants to back populate? What will happen here is still the same thing. It will only work for the people who are like, again, depending on the option, if you choose the first option, it will only work for the people who joined the list or segment in the last 10 days. If you pick the second option, it will start from the beginning for the people who never received this flow. But those people who already received the first email or who already received both of the emails will not be receiving. You don't need to worry about it. And then what will happen if, like, these are the general things that I mentioned before, if you have conditional splits or if you have flow filters or whatever, like if you have some flow filters here, 
those filters, like when you back populate the flow, it will be checked in, uh, as usual, like as people, when people normally join the flow. So when people join the flow and before they receive the email, a filter is checked when they get to a split, the split is checked and seeing if they are meeting the condition or not of the split. So same thing when you back populate the flow, all of those things will still be checked, the filters, the splits and everything. And people who don't meet the conditions will be uh, moved out of the flow even if this, if this is back populating and not a normal trigger of the flow. Those are the main things. And one last thing that I want to mention is something that you shouldn't do because it won't work. Let's say you have two emails, but eventually you want to add a third email, but you're not sure for now. So you add 10 days time delay and you leave it like this. There is no third email for now. And if you back populate the flow, and then after a few days you add another email here, a few days after you back populated the flow, those people who are back populated, nothing would hap will happen for them. Because when people come, how Clavio works, when people come to a time delay, sorry, I was supposed to delete it. When people come to time delay, time delay is not something that they're actually waiting. Time delay is working in Clavio like a scheduler. So when people get here and they need to wait 10 days, they're not staying at this point of the, of the email. They're going here. So they're already in the email section. They're just scheduled to receive the email after 10 days. So if you leave it like this and there is no email or updating a property or whatever below it, it will immediately end the flow. So you need to understand that in case you want people to receive additional email, you will have to add additional email on time before you back populate the flow. If not, this will not work for you. That would be it. If you have any questions about back populating, how back, po back, po back populating for metric flows, metric trigger flows work, how back populating for list or segment trigger flow works, feel free to ask, we'll try to reply, but hopefully this video would be enough. Thanks and have a nice day. Hey, it's me well to ask if you click subscribe and hit the bell button because it helps our channel to grow and gives us ability to produce content for free for you.